everyone, I'm here with my friend Rodem Sivan. Rodem is an incredible guitarist, musician, composer, producer, everything. He also has an awesome YouTube channel you should definitely check out if you're a guitarist. Um, and today we are going to be talking about how to put chords uh, to a melody that you've written. It's something that a lot of you guys have been asking about. So we're going to try to break it down in the simplest ways that we can think of right now and hopefully it will be helpful. So I think the first thing you need to do when you've written a melody is to figure out what key signature your song is in. And that can be a complicated thing. Ideally, you analyze the notes that are in the song you've written and if you know the key signatures and you would know, okay, it's probably in this key based on the notes that are in it. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have a good understanding of the notes in every key signature, that can be a little hard. So I think the easiest way to figure it out is just to figure out which chord, um, when you play the, this magic chord at the end of the song, it should make the song feel resolved and like that's the ending, the final chord. And if you can sort of just, with trial and error, play around with a bunch of different chords, and if you can play a chord that sounds like, ah, this sounds like the end of the song, then 99% of the time that is your key signature. So if the song, if it sounds really nice ending on the chord D major, then your song is probably in the key of D. If it sounds really good ending on the chord E minor, then your song is probably in the key of E minor. Yeah, I guess it's just basically gravity, right? I mean, key centers is basically where all the notes gravitate towards. So eventually a lot of songs, especially when we talk about Western music we have this one point of gravity that eventually we feel very strongly that this is our kind of center yeah it's the home base and so that's where the song will feel finished at the end so i have a little melody that i wrote here just now that we're going to sort of go through those steps as though it was a song that you had written just to sort of show you the process so first let's figure out what key this little melody is in okay so the melody is da, 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 ba, da. Just kidding. Um, yeah, that's it. So let's figure out what the final chord is. And so if you are really like new to music and you really don't know much, you can honestly just sit around at a piano or on your guitar and just play random major and minor chords until you get to a chord that sounds good. I mean, that's definitely one way to do it. There's only so many major and minor chords that you can go through. So eventually you'll probably find one that sounds good. Um, so, I mean, we could sort of do that right now. Like We can. <laughs> It's not the final chord. That does not I mean, feel resolved. I mean, but it could be, you know. It could be, but it doesn't really feel that resolved. I feel a little nervous when I hear that at the yeah. end. It doesn't feel like home. So, so we want to find the chord that after. Da, 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 that is not. <laughs> oh, you're doing trial and error. That's what you're doing right now. Yeah, that is what we're doing. Oh, I said that you were just trolling me. <laughs> <laughs> we're we just trying stuff. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We are. So let's just try it. So. Da, 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 da. Just play a random chord at the end. Does that sound like home? No, it doesn't really feel it resolved. Okay, let's try another one. Da, 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 da. Is that? C. Ah, that so. Was, uh, sorry. Just oh, it's a pound it. I see. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, uh, so C. Okay, so our song is probably in the key of C major. Now, if we wanted to like shorten that process a little bit and not just do trial and error, we could also look at, okay, what's the last note in the song? The last note is. Da -da 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 -da. So it actually ends on the note C. Now, that doesn't, the last note definitely doesn't always tell us a chord but, or in the key center, but maybe the final chord has the note C in it. So you could play around, if you want to reduce your amount of trial and error time, play around with different chords that have the note C in it already. The last note, even if it's E or G, 
you know, it would still be a part of C triad. Whatever the final note is, the chord probably has that note in it. Also, stylistically, again, if it's a more folk or rock or stuff like that, it, it may be more that kind of sort of like way. And if it's more jazz, so you have a little bit more extensions and a little bit more colors that would take For sure. Place. You're more likely to end on a chord that isn't just a major or minor chord, right? Yeah, sometimes it happens. Sometimes it happens. Yeah, exactly. So now that we've figured out the song is in the key of C major, uh, we're gonna look at first at the diatonic chords in the key of C major. And we'll go over briefly how to do that, but if you want to know more about that in more detail, I actually have a video that breaks down in much slower detail about how to find the diatonic chords of the key. I will link that video in the description below. But basically what you do is you look at the the scale for that key signature. So if we're in the key of C major, we're going to look at a C major scale, and then we're going to take every single note in the scale, and we're going to turn it into a chord. And it always follows the same formula as far as which notes turn into major chords, which notes turn into minor chords, and which notes turn into diminished chords. Let's go through them. So when if we're in the key of C, the first note, which is so, which is in the, our case is the note C. That's the first note in a C major scale. That always turns into a major chord. So C major is our first diatonic chord. Then the second note in the scale, in the second degree, is D, and that always turns into C minor. A minor chord, yes. Yeah. So that's going to be D minor. Then the third note, which is E, always turns into a minor chord as well. So that's E minor. Then the fourth note always turns into Major. major, so we've got F major. So, so far we've got C major, D minor, E minor, and F major. Then the fifth note, G, always turns into... Also major. Major chord, yep. And then the sixth note, A, turns into... Minor. minor. Yep, so we've got A minor. And then the seventh note, B, turns into... Diminished. Diminished, yes. So we've got the first, the first, the fourth, and the fifth notes of the scale will always turn into major chords. The second, the third, and the sixth always turn into minor chords, and the seventh note in the scale always turns into a diminished chord. Yeah, and I think it's good to memorize it, but also if you just want to think about it in a logical way, you're basically, the tribes, the chords are one, three, five. So literally, if you think about C major, so one, this is C, then one, two, three, that's E, mm -hmm. and the five, one, two, three, four, five, C, D, E, F, G, so that's one, three, five. Mm -hmm. And you basically do the same process from each one of the, the notes. And if you know the notes in the C major scale, so you just get these triads um, mm -hmm. and you can kind of see how it's built. Yeah, basically all the diatonic chords are built from the notes mm -hmm. in the scale. So if you just always, uh, like for instance, you're starting on C, and then you just go up the scale, skipping a note every time. So C, you jump over D and you go to E, and then you jump over F and you go to G. So you got C, E, and G, that's a C major chord. Then you go to the next note, D, and you make a chord from that. You jump from D, you skip over a note, you jump over E to get to F, then you jump over G to get to A. So it's D, F, A, that happens to be a D minor chord, etc., etc. So it always works out this way that we get the major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished. Cool. So once you figure out the key signature that your melody is in, and you figure out what the diatonic chords are of that key signature, then you can start playing around with those chords and see if they happen to fit anywhere in the melody. Yeah, I think I think a lot of times it's also about kind of the process of tagging. So once you start working with this, it's good to do trial and error, but uh, it's also nice to try and kind of associate colors and chords. So basically, you know, when we're talking about music, I think we're eventually talking about kind of the art of listening. So C, the tonic, the one chord has a certain sound and A minor has a certain sound. And I think the process of learning music and, and practicing is a lot of tagging. So kind of like emotional tagging, like saying like, how does it make me feel switching between C major to A minor or switching between C major to F minor. So that's the four minor, for example, right? So it has a specific sound. So each one of the chords has this like character in a way. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of the process when people write songs is like not only, I guess, to write a song and understand like, oh, I wrote something cool, but also like saying like, oh, this is one to the six mm -hmm. to the four minor. And then you can kind of 
understand the sound color of these chords and songs so when you meet them in the wild you recognize them say hey mr four minor or hey mrs a minor you know so it's nice to be able to kind of recognize that sound whether you're listening to a song on youtube or at a show or you imagine the sound so you can kind of pull it out like, yeah i'm really hearing that five sus chord okay yeah and that's sort of one of the reasons why we even think of chords as sort of numbers and degrees right yeah. is because then we can start of start to recognize and understand the relationships if you start to what Rodo said tagging and identifying you know what does it sound like when you go from the one chord to the four chord or the one chord to the four minor chord you know what is that from one to four or one to four minor like no matter what key you're in that always will sound the same so that's why we do associate these with scale degrees and numbers. So something that's important to understand is that there isn't always one exact chord that's right for any moment in a song. If you're writing the song, you get to choose which chords you want to put with the melody. We And at any given moment in a melody, there's always a bunch of different chords you could use. It will make it sound very different when you change the chords, but there's a lot of chords that do work and sound nice with a melody. So. We're going to sort of talk about and we're going to sort of demonstrate how you have these different options and it's up to you to choose which one you like the sound of if you're writing it. Um, but it's just something to keep in mind is that there's no right answer all the time. Yeah, definitely. I mean, music is just sound. So, I mean, you might imagine a sound that you want to hear, but at the end of the day, any sound can be legit if it's, you know, more diatonic or more chromatic. It's fine. It just Right, it depends on what you're imagining. Totally. Rotom adds all the philosophical moments in. So once you know your diatonic chords and your key signature, um, then you have to play around and see, okay, could I put these diatonic chords anywhere in the melody and will it sound nice? And as far as which diatonic chords to use and where, I think you can first begin by looking at the notes that are in the melody. So let's just take the first section of this little melody. A, B, C, A, C, E, D. And I feel like there's a chord change that happens when it gets to the E, D. So let's just figure out what the chord, the first chord might be for the A, B, C, a, C. So we have the notes A, B, and C. Okay. The B is sort of like a passing tone. We're just kind of passing through it quickly. Mm -hmm. I don't, it's not, I think the main, the main two notes in that phrase are like A and C, right? Mm -hmm. da, da, da. That's the main idea that's happening. And da, da, da. if I were to sort of boil it down into the main, it's da, da. And it's kind of going to that C a lot. So I think we should definitely choose a diatonic chord that maybe has the note C in it. That would be a good place to start. So what diatonic chords have C in it? Well, C major does, right? Mm. What else? F. F does. A minor. A minor. Mm -hmm. So let's try playing all three of those and see what sounds good. Sure. Which one do you want to do first? Start with the A minor, maybe? Start with A minor. Okay. So. Da, 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 da. It sounds nice with A minor, yeah. right? This sounds good. Okay, so A minor, that's, there you go. It sounds good. We've got one first option for that for the beginning of the song. Now let's try F. Sure. Okay. Da, 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 da. It does work, actually. Yeah. It's cool. It's a, maybe not exactly what I was envisioning in my brain, but it's not terrible. It works. It definitely works. Yeah. Now let's try C. Da, 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 da. C sounds nice, too. So all three of those sound good. So here's what we mean when we say you've got lots of options. And there's many more options aside from just those three, too. But let's pick one for now just to stick with it. So what do you want? C, A minor? Those are my two favorites. Yeah, let's start with C, maybe. Just kind of like establishing okay. the key. I think that's also nice sometimes to just be kind of clear and simple. Mm -hmm. where Up we front, are. we yeah, are in like, the okay. key of C. OK, so we'll start with C. So there's our first chord, then C. Da, 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 da. And then let's see if, if I were to stay on C for the next part, let's see if it sounds good. So. Da, 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 da. Kind of clashes a little bit. I I think it. Yeah, the, I think we need a chord change at that moment. The nine. Ooh. Da, 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 da. And then we go to E D. So maybe let's look at some of the diatonic chords that have maybe the notes E or D in them. Mm -hmm. So E minor. Da, da. Oh, that sounds nice. It doesn't have the note D, but if you're playing E minor, you, you can add the 7. But that's kind of like more extensions for the D, so... And that would turn it into an E minor 7 chord? Yeah, but you know, 
maybe that's too much for now, so maybe uh, we can skip that. Yeah, it sounds cool though. E minor definitely sounds good. What other mm, chords, diatonic chords, have E or D in them? Well, D, well, I guess D minor. A little bit of the question is like, are we trying to harmonize the note E or D? Because if, if E is just a passing note and D is the real note, so then you know G could work definitely. You Let's know. try that. Yeah, I'm not sure actually which one we're trying to harmonize with. Um, I guess, yeah, I guess D is sort of the final note. Right, because maybe it's like this like suspension, this like... Like this like... Da, 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 da. Oh yeah, it does sound nice on G. Da, da, da. It sounds nice going to G too, because yeah. Because that note D is in the chord G. Exactly. Yeah. Or also D minor, right? This. Da, da. So then you get the nine. Ooh, that sounds pretty. Yeah. Wow, so many good options, right? So let's try let's play it with C and then D minor first, just yeah. for fun. Okay, so. Da, 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 da. Now let's try it with G. Also sounds good. Let's try it with the E minor now. It's just a different color, right? So yeah. it's, it's uh, what what we, you're imagining, right? Yeah. And of course, you can also start adjusting chords. You know, like you can decide you want some more chromatic things or maybe adjusting, altering the D, you know. Yeah, also. something you can always play around with is a chord that was minor and making it major, just to see if it might sound cool. So for instance, we could take the D minor and try a D major. Let's just see. So. Ooh, that sounds cool, really cool D yeah. major. Yeah, and so why does the D major sound cool? Because D major isn't a diatonic chord in the key of C, so why would D major sound good? Well, in this case, the D major is a secondary dominant, mm -hmm. um, so it's five of five, and we're kind of like it feels like that, like we're kind of heading toward the five. The five is kind of a sort of a tension point, sort of like glue that leads us back to one. So it's it's kind of like this yeah, kind of progression is very common. Even if it's not exactly going to happen in this way in the next few chords, it's that's the feeling. There's this kind of like preparation, more tension that is being built that will send us eventually to the resolution. Yeah, and I haven't made a video yet on my channel about secondary dominance. I definitely will because it's very important. So stay tuned for a more in-depth description of what they are. But um, basically what we're talking about is like the D. So in the key of C, G is our, well, G is the dominant because it's the fifth degree of C major, right? And if we were to look at then the key of G major, what's the fifth degree of G? Well, G, A, B, C, D. D is the fifth degree of G. And the fifth degree always leads you back home to the tonic. So the, so D will lead you home to G. Like if I, yeah, if you play D, it leads you home to G, right? Playing the fifth degree of the fifth degree in the key of C. So if that makes sense. As I said, I'll break it down in more detail later, so don't worry too much about it. In the meantime, what you can do if you, um, you know, just play around with flipping major and minor and see if it sounds good because it certainly might and you don't know until you try so i think i mean we have a lot of good options i think out of because we, we went through we did e minor d major d minor and g major they all sounded good so i'm i think my favorite was the d major what about you yeah actually i like d major a lot okay so yeah. let's this is so far we've got c and then it goes to d major so let's just play up to that point so da -da -ba -da 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 -da. two beats of silence and it goes da -da 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 -da. and the notes are e d c c c a g c so let's first find the chord that would go over the part that goes e d c c c da -da 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 -da. yeah i mean that's kind of a classic ending so g would definitely work okay and how did you know g would work at that moment because I mean, it's leading you to the da -da -da, because of the next phrase I think something that's important to recognize and what you're what you're talking about right now is that whatever the fifth degree is of your key signature, that is always gonna like have a very strong pull back to the home base. Basically before you play the chord C, there's a good chance that the chord G, which is the fifth degree in this case, will be sound nice going before it. So I yeah. think that's why you wanted to put it right. Yeah, you can literally have the whole bar with that melody like You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so 
what, which basically means that we have this like tension of G, of G through the whole melody there. Yeah, I mean that's one option. Granted, maybe there are more and interesting options, but but this is this is a, a solid. So you're choosing the G just because it's it's like a, the nice leading home to the C, the one, exactly. and it works. I yeah. mean, I think it sounds good if we were listening to it. Be something before that G though, right? In that silence, it does. It sounds a little awkward going right to the G. Yeah, you can add another chord. Um, you know, for example, F major might do the trick in that place. Because the four is always a good way to lead into the five. Right? Yeah, yeah. Oftentimes. It Let's is. try. So we've got. good over that melody. It sounds good without a G actually just going. Ah, you can, yeah. Don't you think? I don't yeah, know. or you can have the end like, like, um, you know, like on the A, G. Yeah, we could throw in a G there. So let's see, we could go. Um, We could also do the G a little earlier too, like. I like that too. That's cool, yeah. Splitting I guess, the bar up between yeah, F and G. That sounds really nice. And that part, although it sounds like a little bit like G to me, but it's totally cool when you resolve it and you just like, like already on the resolution. If that you think we're going to see a little early? Yeah, yeah for me it's like a little early. Yeah, I guess. But it's cool. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. It doesn't clash, so it's cool. Um, cool. And so uh, with that other, with this part, we could see. Are there any other chords that might work at that moment? You can do F minor. Ooh. How did you know to go to F minor? Um, it's just. Or are like... we just playing around with making it minor? No, I just, I, I mean, I'm imagining the sound and a lot of times the 4 minor has this like kind of bitey sound to it. It does. Um, Sounds cool. Yeah. So wow, we got a lot of good options. So let's start, let's play it with the F minor okay. all the way through. Sure. So, one, two, ready, go. Da -da 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 So, as you can see, we got a lot of good options just within our world of the diatonic chords and then making them minor. You can also always try looking at chords from the parallel minor key as well. I'm actually planning on making a video about uh, the diatonic chords and minor keys soon. I haven't done that yet, but when I do, I will link that in the description below. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, I think borrowing chords from other centers is always, always fun. You can imagine different sounds like F minor or the A flat. It's, it's further away, right? So like, like A taking flat. that ending. Um. And so how did you know to play A flat? Because I knew that the melody has C at the end and, and that A flat has an C. So it would work. Mm. And we can just go back and resolve to C. Yeah. So I think one of the big takeaways is that if you're feeling intimidated by the concept of chords and harmony and all that stuff and how to put chords to melody. If you think about it, chords are just uh, like a, you know, a group of notes. And if you have a certain note in your melody, um, you could just play around with different chords that have that note in it. And you might find and discover some really cool stuff. Yeah, and it's just all about sound. So I mean, it's cool to understand what we're doing and it's important, I think. But at the end of the day, if it sounds good, it sounds good. Exactly. So it's just about trying. And again, it's good to tag and, and learn the information, but just Try to see what sounds good to you. I think that's yeah. If you're writing, that's that's the goal. You just want to make something that sounds good. Mm -hmm. And that is it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and big thank you to Rodem for joining me. You guys really need to do yourselves a favor and check out his YouTube channel. He posts tons of 
great educational videos about music and guitar and awesome videos of him playing. You really need to hear him play. He's just unbelievably talented. Um, and again, thank you for watching. Oh, also, if you have ideas for lyrics for this little melody we wrote, let me know in the comments below. Let's play through it one more time, okay? So we'll, one, two, ready, go. enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment to say hey and if you're new to my channel welcome I post one video a week and if you want to subscribe I would love to have you here also I will have a PDF a printable PDF worksheet or handout that has um, all the different diatonic chords in every uh, key signature and you can download that in a link in the description below so check it out thank you guys again so much for watching thank you Rotom and have a great rest of your day